St. Clair Shores, Michigan, a summer resort community about 40 minutes from Detroit. Located on prime real estate is Jack's, a lakeside restaurant recently acquired by three bodybuilders, Bill, Scott, and Tamar. Let's do it, Scott. I met Bill and Scott at the gym. Easy, get it? We all work out together and hang out together. All of us are partners in the restaurant. Jax is known for having great entertainment, being the resort style place to come to. It's like girls gone wild across the whole lake. Winter time, there isn't much going on. Jax has had a reputation for bad food. I don't think I'd order it again. And so that's really, in my opinion, that's what killed us. We really got to fix this. We brought AJ in to run the kitchen. Here's the ribeyes. AJ is Tamer's father. No, that's your table. That's your kebab. I don't see the fish and chips, man. No, you don't understand. We put all this trust in him. Oh, never mind. And the kitchen has completely fallen apart. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. So we had put him in the front of the house to act as the general manager, just so we don't have to fire him, because that is my partner's father. Can I help you with something? I'll be talking to the customers, flirting with the ladies, and asking about the food in between. I'm gonna go get myself a drink. On a business level, I can't stand a man. Every night during hours, he gets wasted. He gets so drunk. Bring it on. <laughs> Uzo is my favorite drink. I like to drink Uzo. And we are gonna have music tonight. To me, it's not professional. <laughs> it's a nice life. I like it. <laughs> I'm gonna take him out and beat him. Scott is dangerous. He can hurt you if he wants to hurt you. People are terrified of him. No, no, no. One minute late, I'm telling you to see. Started getting calls from customers saying he scares everybody away. So Tamara and I had to make a decision to remove him from the restaurant. Unbelievable. He's a silent partner. I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. Total mess. We got Aaron in to replace my father in the kitchen. I'm looking for 53 calamari. Let's go. I had only been here seven weeks, and the whole ball of wax was, uh, was, was messed up. I'm smelling fire. I knew there had to be some changes, but I wasn't going to be allowed to make them because the owner is really happy with the menu. It's just unfortunate that we have to take money from other avenues to try to make the place survive. I'm the one that has the most investment. I have almost a half a million dollars invested. If we're about to lose this business, I can't recover. Scott feels that we are running the business into the ground and he's losing all of his money. We owe Fairway $11,000. I mean, we owe back sales taxes. We owe back payroll taxes. When you start getting to owing the government money, then you know, that's an issue. If things don't change, I don't know how to make the place survive. Taking advantage of the frozen lake, Gordon snowmobiles his way to Jack's. Wow. Absolutely amazing. This restaurant is centrally located at the heart of five great lakes, but they're in trouble. I don't know why, and I'm about to find out. Unbelievable. Jacks. Wow. What a place. Welcome to Jacks. Hey, nice to Jay. see you. Nice to have you. Gordon. Come on in. I'm actually not nervous, but I hope he loves the food, of course. Um, AJ, so you're the owner? No. But Scott is here, and Bill are here, yes. And Scott is the bouncer? No. Why don't you standing there looking for a fight? Come over. Show the way you standing there. How you doing, my man? How are you doing? Good, good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Are you in training or what? I've been training 24 years of my life. It's extraordinary. Are they real or...? They're very soft. So, you're the owner? I'm one of the owners. His son is another owner. Okay. He'll be in this afternoon. Okay, good. And there's one more somewhere. Yeah, nice to meet you. Huh? Another <laughs> gym rat. Extraordinary. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Should we step out? After meeting two owners and a general manager, Gordon decides to talk to each of them individually so that they can be totally honest about the problems at Jack's. Now, what kind of hours are you putting in? 65 a week. And Scott put 65 in? No. We had to move him out of the restaurant. He was scaring my employees. Holy shit. Why was Scott pushed out? Because he's lost a ton of customers because of the things that he did. We got complaints, complaints, and complaints. 
Why would you scare customers away? I, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe because I was intense, you know? But I want to be more involved. What's the problem with the restaurant? We have terrible food. Yeah. What's the problem with the restaurant? I personally don't see a problem with the business. It's really good. It's... OK. Um, what's the problem with the restaurants? AJ. What's he drinking? You know, you know, he drinks ouzo all the time. He just turned around and drank a quick shot. That's what he does. Makes him $100,000 a year. 100 grand? Yes. Ridiculous. Oh, my God. Three individuals, three completely different stories. I haven't even tasted the food yet. Where'd you start? Oh, my God. Okay, here we go. Hmm. Right. Nice Erica. to see you, darling. Erica, it's really important for me to see as much as possible. I would try this omelet here. Oh, it's crab spoon. Just split it with a cake. It yeah. looks like crab. Yeah. <laughs> a crab omelet? <laughs> I hope not. Okay, I'll definitely take one of the uh, K omelets. Okay. Then I'm gonna go after that for the uh, honey pecan salmon. Okay. And then um, mm. good old fashioned fish and chips. Oh, good. Yeah? Thanks, Sam. Excellent. You just sat there staring at me. Like some big muscle head meatball. Fuck me. Aaron. What? Why do you spell with your crab with a K on the. Because it's not real, it's mock crab meat. I didn't want anybody to get the misconception. It's artificial. That's a guarantee, no complaints on this. Guaranteed? That's a pretty bold statement. Excellent. Thank you, my darling. Wow, look at the size of that. That's a lot of crap. And you haven't told me about the K yet. Oh, he said he wanted everybody to know that it wasn't real crab, it's artificial crab. So he spelled it with a K so there was no misconception. So it's fake crab meat mm -hmm. in a seafood restaurant on the water. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck me. Holy crap. Rubber, tasteless. That's going straight to the trash. Okay. Oh, my God. What's Our wrong? Omelet, he hated it. Why? The fake crab was the number one reason. The omelet didn't go over well. No. He doesn't like the crab in there. I, I've never, I, that was already here. I didn't buy that stuff. I don't want to use frozen fish. It's not a product that I'm absolutely overly proud of. But at the same point, I'm held accountable for all the inventory that the owners have paid for. I was a fool so far. Why are we serving fake crab in an omelet? I don't. He did that. You're the general manager. Why do you, <laughs> why do you laugh? I give the choice. Have you been drinking? No. The crab was shocking, embarrassing, and fake. It tastes disgusting. Have you tasted that crab? No, I'm extremely allergic to crab and shrimp, so no I crab can't in, even There's eat no it. crab in there. I understand, it's monkfish. So, oh, my God. I'll let you finish your meal. General manager, my ass. I'm being blamed. He thinks that I should be allowing him to do that. Or letting him letting serve him. those types of Correct. dishes? Because it's fake crab. AJ is the general manager. He's supposed to oversee the food. And now I'm hoping and praying that Gordon says AJ is the one that's bleeding his business. OK, fish and chips. Certainly the best looking thing I've seen. Is it really rubbery? Is it frozen, the fish? I believe it's frozen. It is frozen. When you take a bite of that cod, it's almost like you've got a breaded condom in your mouth. Oof. He said it was rubbery, uh, too greasy, and it just said it tasted like a frozen cod, and obviously he hit it right on the button, so. This is the same recipe that we've used here forever, so I am for change. I want to change. Good. Wow, this one is the salmon. salmon. Look at that. Thank you, sweet. Just so sweet. The dressing is like honey, and so much of it. Absolutely disgusting. Quite possibly one of the worst salmon dishes I've ever eaten. We hate it. I don't like it. No. I don't like anything. That's one man's opinion. It's a pretty successful opinion, though. <laughs> Fuck. Whoa. After one of the worst meals he's ever had. This is Chef Aaron. Aaron. Chef Ramsey, how are you doing? Gordon begins to explore how this perfectly situated seafood restaurant can serve such dreadful food. That was horrendous. Why are you serving fake crab meat? It's inventory that we have. Have you tasted that? It's plain. There's nothing to it. It's just disgusting plastic. It's exactly what it is. The salmon dish. That 
or shit at its best. Sweet on sweet on sweet on sweet. That's actually one of the top sellers. That's why the place has got such a shit reputation for crap food. It's still not clear who's in charge of the food. He's in charge of the food. It's not true. I have no control. I follow the guys being thrown under the bus because all the recipes and the things that he didn't enjoy are things that were set in place before I even got here. Who's controlling the fucking menu? The owners are. Scott, is that what you wanted here? Not at, not at all. I don't have nothing to do with food. What? Yes. AJ, I want answers. There are certain things that are not under my Sorry, control. you're the general manager. I tried not to have it go on, but I get overruled. AJ has many excuses and never wants to own up to his faults. <laughs> it's terrible. AJ, it's got to be your responsibility. No, no. With no one taking responsibility for any of the problems, Gordon knows the best way to get any answers is to observe tonight's dinner service. OK, how would you like that cut? All right, it's our first order. We got tables. Tamar, how you doing, brother? After working a full day at his other job. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Tamar, the restaurant's third partner, arrives. Let me ask you straight out, what do you think is wrong with the restaurant? The food's like hit and mess, it's inconsistent. Yeah. And forget the father figure now, but isn't AJ responsible for the food and beverage in terms of running the restaurant and the kitchen? Yes. And every time I asked AJ to what was going on, he was blaming the owners. I do have the most difficult position being here. I'm working with my friends and my father, who is my family, and that makes everything very difficult. It sucks. I'm gonna have a look around, spend okay. time in the kitchen, the dining room. Chef. It's good to meet you. Yeah, likewise, finally. This rice has issues. Take this out and at least try to stir it up or something. You brought it up here? Why well, I gotta move it? There's not enough depth in our kitchen. Yeah, I got a big chunk here, too. What the fuck, man? They've been set in their ways. I don't know that they want to conform to a change. Do we have any rice yet? Nope. I threw it out. Oh, my God. With a clear lack of support in the kitchen. I'm fucked here. Aaron has yet to send out the first wave of orders. She said it's on the way. So it's Christmas. <laughs> My lead is table 11. They don't have any food. Well, it doesn't come in 15 minutes, I'll so see. 15 minutes, we're All right. Here's a big blue filet up top. 45 minutes into the dinner service, and food is finally beginning to leave the kitchen. Keep it going. 64 calamari. I'll take it any time. As the dishes get rushed to the dining room, that looks wrong. customers are receiving food that's not exactly the way they ordered it. We gotta send this back. What's wrong with that? It's supposed to be a uh, well done in the career. Oh, for fuck. A well done steak is the easiest steak in the world to cook. Not It's a little chewy to me. Ribeye, we need this medium on the fly. It was overcooked. There, where the cheese is. She said it, she said it's terrible. I, she didn't like it. We need a chicken alfredo on the fly. We hate that. Okay. He wants this under the heat for it. We're weeded here, dude. We're weeded here. Right I've never seen frozen food so fucking complicated. Unbelievable. An absolute meltdown. Not just in the kitchen, but the dining room as well. Just under 20 dishes have come back. And more frustratingly, it's frozen food. They can't even cook that right. Unbelievable. <laughs> Where'd your dad go? I don't know. <laughs> AJ's gonna have to get back up. Where is he? AJ is a general manager here now, and he needs to be overseeing the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> we won't probably be coming back here. The food was raw. It was raw. It we're, we're gonna take care of this, and then, you know, please come back, because it's only gonna get better. I don't know. Now just comp it. Buy him around on me. Okay. So much money lost. You guys, I'm getting, I'm giving away every damn meal that I have tonight. Everything I'm giving away, free. Honest to God, the last hour, everything we gave away is free. Oh my God, can it get any worse? I'm watching food get thrown away in the garbage can. That's my money going out the window. It's just a disappointment I let it go on this long. After a chaotic dinner service with numerous dishes coming back and comped food, Gordon confronts the owners with an important question that has yet to be answered. Who has the final say at Jack's? We haven't come to an agreement on that. 
We've only been in the business for one year. AJ, he's been in the business for 40 years, and we were relying on that to drive us to where we needed to be, and he has let us down. That's the truth. That's what it is. Right. So that's a tough spot for you. Yes. My dad has made many mistakes here, but my partners need to step up and understand he's my father, and that makes everything very difficult. You have to separate the father-son. Nothing to do with business. You have to let go. That's the first and foremost crucial thing in this fucking restaurant. Understandable. I think AJ is the main reasons why this business is extremely in whole, and he's still taking his damn check every damn week. We ain't. AJ, you're the one that makes all the money, not us, you know? Yeah, how many hours are left week, Scott? That doesn't matter. I put the money up, not for you to lose it. I put it up because AJ was supposed to be a 40-year restaurant. Let me say something. I booked eight parties, big parties, by thousands of dollars, and that's the thankfulness I get from this man. He's acting like a child. You know, be a man, face up. Story after story after story after story, I'm so sick of it. I'm pissed. With so much food coming back last night, that's not normal in any restaurant. So I decided to get in early this morning, have a good look around before any member of the staff come in. That is salmon. That's just marinated in, it's like, an Italian dressing. Oh, dear. What's this? Oh. Seafood restaurant on the water. Tuna and dyed pink to make it look authentic. Look at it. My god. Unbelievable. And here we have. That looks like the mushroom risotto. Great risotto. Unbelievable. Alarmed by the state of the kitchen, Gordon is anxious to take the staff on a tour. Good morning. There's something I want to show you guys, yeah? Come with me. Come in. The general hygiene in this fridge is a fucking joke. All right, come round. Walking round, want to get up to speed, looking at the ingredients, checking. What is that? Is that just taken from the steam table and dumped on the trolley and then whisked yeah, in here? That's exactly what it is. That should be straight in the trash. Hey, I ate here yesterday. Yeah. I'm not happy. Whoever's responsible, 40 years in the business, well experienced. You have to seriously start opening your eyes. This place is not right here. We got no chance. I did not know that was going on. Item after item. Oh, I was pissed. What's this here? I um, believe it's beef tips. Beef bits in blood. That's nasty. I need some answers, AJ. It's pretty terrible, and uh, you know a lot of it lies on AJ. There's no excuse for it. And that's the that's the classic of the day. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a risotto. Take a good look. Unfortunately, it's not a drawing. That's real serious shit at its best. It's a joke. Look at the fucking color of the chicken. AJ, come on, have a look at it. Yeah, no, okay. you've got to see it, AJ. I do see it. My father doesn't want to deal with the back of the house. The back of the house is falling apart. That's my frustration. I'm sorry, but it's not right. It's got to be somebody's responsibility. I'm not going to take responsibility. It's the owner's fault. Why would I blame myself for that? I'm not going to blame him for that. Unbelievable. Trusting my dad is obviously not working. Look at where all our money is gone. I'm really oh, mad right now. They can't go on like this. Get everyone together. We're going to just get everything cleaned up, start scrubbing walls, cleaning all the stoves, get rid of all that food in there, whatever's dirty, garbage. While the staff and owners clean the kitchen, Chef Ramsey meets with local fishermen. How are you? Why is your meeting here? To see what Jack's is not taking advantage of just outside its doors. Fresh fish. The ice is what, a foot deep? Uh, the ice is actually about nine inches. Look the size of that tiny little rod. Yeah, I'll try it a couple and times. That, you that, might get um, something that, on there. That, that attracts them, my god. Yeah, if you feel something, then you pull it up. Perch, I mean, very tasty. Oh, very yeah. tasty. Do you yes. ever get into jacks to yes. eat? Oh, yes, I do. What's the food like in there? I don't like their fish so much because they use a little bit too much sauces and kind of lose the actual flavor of the yeah. real fish, you know? Yeah. You got something on there? I think you no. got a fish. Pull it, pull it, pull it up. Oh, yeah, he is, he is on the yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. You got one. Very good, very good. Very good. It's just nasty. It is nasty. And I've had people tell me, when I eat at your restaurant, I get sick, and I start laughing, thinking, oh, they're just full of shit. They're not. They do get sick. Gross. This is fucked up. Oh, my god. God, look at them, eh? Not a bad catch today. Fantastic. Now, 
I'm going to um, turn this into a, a really nice chowder. OK, and once you guys are finished, you're going to come over and have a bowl? Absolutely. Yeah? Hey, yeah. thank you very much. Get those Pleasure. bloody hands warm. See you later. After an informative afternoon with the locals, Chef Ramsay introduces the first of many changes designed to get Jax back on track. You and you and I are going to go make a chowder. Yeah. And we're going to serve it in a bread basket. Something simple, finished, fresh local caught fish. Let's go. Up. I'm pretty excited to prepare this food. I, I think that this, some of these changes are going to be what does it for us. Start off with a touch of olive oil, bacon, onions, celery, yeah, with a touch of Tabasco. Oh my gosh, I'm standing here next to Chef Ramsay. He's showing me food that he likes and he thinks will work. You better take advantage of it, that's all I can think of. Bang, a really nice chowder. Yeah. And then I'm going to do a little poached salmon as well. So salmon in, three or four minutes in there. The whole thing has to ooze fresh. Out of the cold bouillon. Your broth. Over. Two easy dishes to make the pressure less on the line. I'm excited. Yeah, I hope you are. With the special set, Gordon decides to implement one other change to the dinner service. Scott, you said you want to be more involved. Tonight, run a section. Present the menu, welcome them, hand over, take the order, push the specials, and serve. Scott is going to get beat up really bad tonight. I'd like to laugh at him a little bit. He's going to be running your Ooh. section tonight. Give him your apron. Yeah, I think we've got enough string to go around. And, um, <laughs> yeah, prove that you're not some scary monster that wants to beat the crap out of everybody. Does that large egg have a smile or not? Sure. Yeah. Give us one. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, fucking hell. OK. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Push the specials. Excite them. Don't scare them. Uh-oh. Okay. With customers starting to arrive, How are you? Good. Scott is embracing being a waiter. The kitchen seems ready with the new specials. Now I'll keep my eye in the window and communicate with you. And everyone seems ready to make tonight's service a success. I believe we have balsamic or vinegar. Why would you? I would prefer balsamic. If, if we, if I don't have, you know, bear with me. I, I, if we don't have balsamic, is raspberry okay? Okay. How's he doing? He's doing good. He's doing good. Yeah. I'm watching. He's doing great. Actually. Why is his head all tilted like that? I don't know exactly what happened. I have everything right off for you guys. Thank you. Roly poly. Like a chimpanzee hanging over a cage looking for some bananas. Oh, like... mm -hmm. yes. Come on, eh? Give us some oomph there, yeah? Oomph, mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. It's a half hour into dinner service, and the new fresh seafood specials are a popular choice. I'm going to have poached salmon. Fish chowder and seafood chowder. As the tickets pile in. Three special salmon and a chowder. The challenge now is getting the food out. God, I need those special salmon. Gulo. Special what? I'd call for stuff, and they'd be not listening to my organization and what I wanted to have come up to the hot plate. One piece of salmon. Did you season it with salt, like I said? Oh, shit. Need it? I need it yesterday. Get it done. Not one table came out of this kitchen completed yet. Fuck. Come on. It's so frustrating looking at the cooks behind the line because they don't actually give a damn. <laughs> so Aaron's got his work cut out, and he can't work with that dead wood. No chance. With Aaron's orders falling on deaf ears. I'm dying, dying for those Alfredos. Very little food has left the kitchen. Wait, where's our food? Wait, 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 wait. 45 minutes to an hour for our food. Shaking. That's I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad. Okay, calm down. Calm down. It's gonna be okay. Look, you guys. It didn't say cheese on the ticket. I can't have cheese on the burger. What are we gonna do? We gotta fix this. I don't know nothing. Well, they're waiting forever for this food. Be honest, I, I don't know. That time they start showing the guy a little bit of respect. But they're not. So that one guy is just rude to him. I need a new bun for this kid burger, please. Anton, give me a new bun on now. Aaron. And look at me. He's got to do it. Yeah. You can't mop up for them. Can we run that? Come right back for that kid burger, please. Christ. The place is going down in flames. The tickets are backed up. Nothing's coming out. It turned into a total disaster. Oh, my God. An hour into dinner service. Virtually no food has left the kitchen. Oh, my God. And Aaron, who's only been working at the restaurant for a matter of weeks. Just toast me a croissant. I need it yesterday. I don't know what that is. Now faces the prospect of running the kitchen alone. 
Why do my yeah, items take so long? It's too much of a head fuck here. I want to talk to you about it seriously to get it fucking right. And each and every one of you have to step up to the mark. This restaurant hasn't got long to go unless we change. We're changing, with or without you. So do as the chef says and listen, OK? It was good that Chef Ramsey came in and he kicked them between the legs and made said, hey, get your shit together or get out. You got 84 coming my way, right, Grill Fry? OK. Chicken burger, no cheese. Finally. OK, special salmon. Pinko perch up top, 84 up top. Good. Food is finally coming out of the kitchen. Thank you. Oh Look God. at that. Oh. And Scott is finally getting comfortable as a waiter. Can I get not anything out of your way, guys? Although diners are enjoying the new seafood specials. How's the fresh perch? Great. Yes. Fantastic. Nice. The rest of the menu is a disaster. I need this a little bit more. It's really good. That's not made well. The, the, the complaint's got to go straight back to the kitchen. Whoever's cooking the shrimp's overcooking it. They've got to know before service. If we tell them after, the next dish is going to be overcooked as well. It's going to be done straight away. OK. Yeah? The customer can wait. AJ? When they're in a crunch in the kitchen, AJ sometimes gets confused. AJ? AJ? Who's calling me? Of course, we laugh because he waddles away. But at the end of the day, it's really not funny. The kitchen needs to know first, my friend. Mm -hmm. Then they stop fucking overcooking it. That's your job. We got a complaint on the shrimp. Aaron, listen! Aaron. Listen! We got a complaint on the shrimp. There was poorly cooked food. Or it was undercooked food, or they weren't happy with the food. We lost it. We lost control. Is that ready? This is not ready. No. This is not ready. Come on, big boy! Sick of this shit. We're going down quicker than the Titanic. They get better service at a shelter than they do here. What the fuck, dude? Honey. I, I don't know. Everything was screwed up. Give it to me again without all the grease in the bottom. Food got screwed up. Oh, I need the whole sandwich remade. Come on, pissed off. With yet another meltdown in the kitchen, Chef Ramsay knows drastic changes are needed. Aaron, there's no one behind there that respects you enough as the head chef, and you need to stamp your authority on that kitchen. I mean, a joke. It is a joke. You're not an asswipe for your staff. They're there to support you. And I'm more fucked off with you, AJ, because you passed it to him. If this was my restaurant, your salary would be cut by 50%. Half your salary can benefit crucial areas that need supporting right now. That's a big thing. He is the motivation for me being here. So cutting my dad's salary, that's not a, a simple thing to do. And I'm not a heartless, cold-hearted person. Tomorrow, there's going to be major changes. We're relaunching this place. And I am going to have them crammed in here like fucking sardines. In order to be ready for the relaunch, Gordon's team works all night to make Jack's a more inviting seafood restaurant. Now, all night we've been working, yeah? Ready. We've made some really nice, exciting, subtle changes. It's beautiful. Ready. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. I'll check it out. <laughs> Very cool. It's awesome. This is sweet. Hey, something That's the which love. I can't believe you've never had in here. I know. Yeah? Fun for the kids, yes? A wonderful fish tank. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. What do you think of the boys in the ceiling? Those are great. Huh? That's so great. great. <laughs> so simple, but cool. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look at the metal. We've got the oh, wow. wall cool. lined with that corrugated iron. So it just modernizes it up, freshens it up. That wood looks built. so nice. And no more faded wood. I hated those walls before. You. Nice little fresh fish tanks on the wall, yes? Oh, there's little fish in there. We've got the little fish tanks along the wall as well, just so when you sat in those booths, you can have some fun. That is great. I was like, wow. Especially because I thought the only answer to this place was a bulldozer. It's incredible how he took something so simple and made it so warm and inviting. It's, it's great. Thank you so much. Mm. And none of you are oh, very welcome. Now, you're probably wondering why the rope is on the table, yes? This is the new menu, yes? Wow. Yeah, and on the back of the menu... How did yeah, I know? You can have some fun with the knots. That is yes? so cool. OK, here you go. give the kitchen a touch of time when we get backed up. How fun. Yes? That's awesome. That's so cool. Chef Ramsey took it real simple. He took a nautical theme we had, and he ran with it, and some simple, nice, light touches, and it's great. I love what he did here. It's warm. It feels friendly. I love it. Thank you. 
Now that the decor has been freshened up, Gordon introduces the most critical change for this restaurant, a new menu. Fresh mussels, crab cakes, fresh oysters, the fish tacos, yes? Yeah? Nice. Like post salmon, exactly like last night, fresh, delicious. I'm glad the whole menu's gone. I thought that menu was crap when I got here. Now that it's gone, I'm pretty excited to prepare this food. My favorites, yeah, fish and chips, yeah, with homemade tartar sauce. You now can stand proudly and announce that Jack's has the best fish and chips in Michigan, OK? The menu is incredible. I'm excited to actually be a part of this new restaurant and hitching where it's needed. Big night. We're relaunching Jack's tonight, and we're starting afresh. People are going to come back to this place and finally enjoy coming back to Jack's again. OK? We're ready. Don't fuck it up, yes? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Are you and I up? <laughs> With relaunch night upon them, Jack's not only has a new menu to contend with, but a winter storm as well. Cold. This is crazy. It's a winter storm, but it hasn't stopped anybody from coming, and these cars have backed up nearly half a mile. Now, Jack is back, and if this doesn't work on relaunch night, I'll take that rope and hang all three of them over the side. Unbelievable. Fuck me, it's cold. All right, they open this up. Nice, I like that. This is going to keep kids entertained. I know. This too, you, know, you can tie, you can play. That's something that I like. The, uh, everybody loves the new remodeling we did, so they're having a lot of fun. We did a figure eight. I mean, I have the baby bedrooms. I'll have the herbal chips. Turn it up now. Yes, sir. Turn it up now, yeah? Yes, sir. There's no room for error. I'm the chef. I need to control my brigade. How much? How long on chicken wing? Answer my question. I'm going to do my best to be the strongest chef that I can be here. All right, this has got to go. Steak dish. It's really good. Yeah. Chicken is like the best about me. I've ever had. With customers clearly excited about the new Jacks, the restaurant fills to capacity, and the kitchen faces a monumental test. OK. Sell me a fish taco. You hear me? Fish taco, how long? Let's go. OK, I can't talk with nobody listening. Come on, guys, answer him, please. Fish taco. Fish taco. Fish taco. Fish taco. They're fucking dying on grill fry here, man. With Aaron still fighting to get his staff on board. All right, so sorry. There's a little bit of a hold up in there. Customers who ordered fried food are getting restless. So you know there's a new look, right? Yeah. Now we're waiting for the food. Well, bear with us if it takes a couple minutes for the food, no please. How's uh, Chef Aaron doing? Under massive stress. <laughs> yeah, losing his mind. I got food dying. Jesus Christ. These guys are they're, they're, I'm getting buried by Grill Fry. I'm not getting any of their food. Everybody else's food is coming up. They're burying me. Grill Fry's getting beaten, AJ. Bill, I need him to coordinate with me. I need a fish and chip to sell right now. I can't stress enough that AJ, he has 40 years plus experience. Of course, I throw them in the kitchen to help us out. I need two coconut. roasted chickens. Here's coconut shrimp. Where are they? Coconut shrimps. I don't need coconut shrimps. When AJ came back here to help. <laughs> Here's your full boy. Here you go. Full boy. What table numbers are you feeding me, AJ? Table 41. 41? AJ, I sold 41 like 45 minutes ago. OK, never mind. Fuck, man. You have to communicate. You have to communicate. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, better than that. Better than that. Can't even see him behind the fucking line. Get a box on the stamp. I can't see the short ass little fucker. Yeah, hold on. Unbelievable. 243 customers through the door so far. Alan's backed up in the kitchen. He's asked for help. AJ's gone in there and made it worse. If they're not careful, this place can fucking sink. Now, I will see what's holding up those appetizers, OK? Thank you. Coconut shrimp, lead app. How long? You guys are killing me down there. You're bringing the whole kitchen to an end. We're going to have to slow the seating down. I can't, these guys cannot keep up. I'm hearing, where's my fries? Where's my fish? And then I don't hear it. It's up in one minute. I'm up in two minutes. I wasn't hearing nothing. So I was like, screw that. I need that fish taco. Hey, don't talk like that. Give me the food I asked for. I don't need your lift. You busy, I'm busy. Fuck you. I don't want to hear no damn arguing back here. I hear people screaming at each other. The only person that should be giving orders back here is Aaron. Is that understood, everybody? Excuse me, did I hear an answer? Did I hear a yes? I'd like to hear an answer. You guys are killing me down there. You're 
You're bringing the whole kitchen to an end. With anarchy in the kitchen. The only person that should be giving orders back here is Aaron. Is that understood, everybody? The former silent partner decided it was time to speak up. I'd like to hear an answer. Yes, sir, sir. All right. That's it. Fucking believable. Scott came back here and he showed that he gave a shit, you know, where before I'd never see Scott. And that actually helped me. Okay, let's go. I'm looking for a fish taco. Aaron! Fish taco, thank you. Beautiful. That's nice looking food. With Aaron now finally controlling his kitchen, orders are getting to the customers a lot quicker. All right, I almost have a smile on my face, guys. I'm almost smiling. I'm loving the food, yeah? Keep it yeah. going. Man. Keep it going. Yes, nice. sir. And more importantly, you've got clarity with your fucking brigade. I agree. Salut. Salut. As dinner winds down, thank you guys. There's a problem with the night's final order of onion rings. That look undercooked, way undercooked. Yeah. Chef Aaron clearly follows Gordon's advice and demands quality food and respect from his staff. Martini, what are you doing? Smoke a cigarette? Did you sell those things, those onion rings earlier so you could go do that? No. Go look at them. They're shit, man. All night onion rings have been beautiful. Look at them. T touch them. I was in the back going touch to the bathroom, em. man. Touch them. I'll drop them again right now. God damn that shit. It can't happen. Good. Last table of the night, the food has to be just as good at the end of the night as it is in the beginning. Holding his staff accountable till the last minute, Aaron is finally acting like a head chef. Scott. Yes. Good job with what you did with the kitchen. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. I feel my partners realize that, you know what, I can be a benefit here. I enjoy it, yeah. This helped me redeem myself to my partners. I think that Gordon Ramsay saved my friendship, my partnership, and this business. I, for the first time in this restaurant, saw each and every one of the owners working their ass off. None of you were fragmented. It was together. We fixed the biggest problem in Jack's, and that was the food. Now you know what it's like to maintain that. Tama, what's the most important thing you've got out of this week? I got a partner. <laughs> nice. Seriously, the most important thing I got out well, of this week. What a lovely compliment. And when I first met you, big boy, honestly, I thought your days were numbered. The rumors, the crap, and you've turned it around. We know what we're doing if we put our minds together and we work together. We can fill this place. Absolutely right. There's only one thing. Excuse me? Tamar, I, Bill, we've yeah. all admitted that, you know, we kind of put ourselves out there. AJ never admitted to nothing. You know, a lot of this was his fault. I never said I have no faults, and I did the best I can with all the hours I put. Let me talk for a second. On that exact point, you are here way too much to be effective. I know you think you're effective. We don't think you're effective at 80 hours a week. AJ, it would be the most generous thing you could do as a father for his son to step back. Cutting back on the hours okay. and cutting back on the pay. Not a problem. Yeah. Not a problem. I hope Scott, Bill, and Tanner will see that the hours I put here were needed to run the business. They probably will see it. Maybe on my deathbed, they'll confess it, but not before then. That's hard, that, with that. That yeah. was very hard. It, 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 I've been agonizing over that conversation. It wasn't a personal thing at all. It was, it's needed for him, too. He can't be here that many hours. It's good for everybody. I can't yeah, wait, so yes, to get back, yes? You, we're bringing you to the gym when you come back. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Take care, Gordon. Oh, Thank you. Oh, dear. Good night, guys. Thank you for everything. Keep pumping, yes? Yes, sir. After Gordon left, in the days that followed, Bill, Scott, and Tamar gave Aaron the full authority to run the kitchen, the menu, and the staffing. If you have anybody in here that has to go tonight, you can remove them tonight. Aaron immediately fired two cooks and brought in two experienced sous chefs. They don't know the way it was before, and there'll be a new standard set. And the partners realized, although it was difficult, they needed a new general manager to take over Jack's and so they fired A.J. 
he let it happen, and what is done, he did to himself. Right. You're right. I can't You're put right. it on me. You're right. Or no. you. It just sucks that it is, because that's your dad, but you got my support. Firing my dad is what I need for this place to survive, and he's going to back us up on what we need to do, just like any father would that loves their son. We're now moving in the right direction. We actually finally know what we're doing. I think it's awesome. We do three, four right. nights like this, it'll be a breeze back here. Thank you, Gordon. This was an experience of a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> the three of us as owners have never been as close as we are right now. Great Neck, New York is an upscale community on the north shore of Long Island, where competition among Italian restaurants is fierce. Trobianos has been struggling to survive for the past three years. Owned by Anthony Trobiano and his girlfriend's parents, they are now just months away from losing everything. My desire to own a restaurant basically started right after culinary school, uh, working for other people. Look at that, huh? And then I said to myself, why am I busting my ass for everybody when I could be doing it for myself? Yeah, Joe, put a steak knife on there. Anthony came to me one day and says, this place is available, you want to buy it? I don't know if it took balls or I was just plain stupid doing it. They go right over me and ask him. Having a business together, you know, you see too much, you're together too much, there's resentment because of it. Appetizers, they see go out or no? one minute. Tip. I, I, I heard you. Me and Anthony have been together for six years. We used to never fight, ever. I thought he was like the best person in the world. And then we got here, I'm like, who am I going out with? I want a whole new fucking slip. We should have two. When it comes down to running the business, it's really Anthony that runs it. Hey, change the fucking ticket, bro. Come on. Fucking kid. It's my restaurant, my rules, and that should be the bottom line. Fire 14. At the beginning, Trobianos took off. We didn't maintain the food coming out fast enough with quality. And from there, our business decreased. There will be plenty of open tables, believe me. The Early Bird Special was my idea. Any place you like? It's bringing in people to keep the boat afloat. How are we doing, folks? Everything all right? Forget about it. I feel like I'm in Florida. It's crazy. I'm working, killing myself to pay bills. I don't want to live like this. I don't. I don't really want to live this way anymore. It's depressing. I put my parents into this position. They were finally getting comfortable, and now they have no choice but to work, or they're going to lose everything. Anthony? He's only my daughter's boyfriend. I put my faith, I put my home, my retirement, my wife's well-being, everything else on the line with this young man. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, it is my name on the awning. To think that my name is going down as well as the restaurant, that would definitely be disappointing. You guys have to run more food, OK? We are. More. The last three years have been rough. By this time in my life, I thought we would have been married, had kids already. If we don't get Chef Ramsay's help, there's no other options for us. OK, here we are. Oh, shit, it's for sale. No, that's an early bird dinner menu. $14.95. Fuck me, stupid as a sub shop. Right, Trobiano. Here we are. Hello. Hi there. How are you? How are you? Gordon, please. First name is? Joe. Joe, good to see you. Very nice to meet you, Chef Ramsay. Likewise, good Pat. to see you too. Nice Pat, nice to, to see you. When Chef Ramsay came through that door, I thought it was a blessing. I think hopefully he'll put us straight. So, uh, who came up with the bright idea of opening a restaurant? You've bought a restaurant with your future father-in-law. It was just an exciting thing, you know? You were able to purchase a restaurant as a dream of mine. How old are you now? 28? 29? Mm -hmm. So you were 25 when you opened it? Mm -hmm. Which is fucking young to open a restaurant. <laughs> sure. Yeah? Yeah, I thought that was ready. Ambitious, you know? And have you trained in Italian restaurants? No. I have not. I felt I knew everything. I still do. Are you that arrogant? Possibly. I wouldn't open a fucking Italian restaurant without working in one. I definitely think Anthony needs to hear that he's arrogant because I say it to him sometimes and he takes it as, oh, yeah, you, know, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm gobsmacked. That a young man at the age of 25 would manipulate his future father-in-law to open an Italian restaurant having never worked in a fucking Italian restaurant. That doesn't make sense. No offense, I didn't pin him down and handcuff him and said, you, I need your house to put the restaurant. You've got the house now. Chef Ramsay was, you know, making me feel like it's my fault that the restaurant ain't doing too well. I have enough pressure as it is. You guys are struggling to get married, and you've been married for a long time. You know, that level of pressure, how do you manage that? It's been rough because we can't do what we want to do anymore. We just can't do it. Tiffany? I hate it here. 
and he'll get mad at me that I'm saying this, but I do. I don't like it here. It's not that I don't like working. I like you, honestly. It's just hard yep. sometimes. Having Anthony and my parents as partners tends to be difficult. Anthony says one thing and then my parents say another, and, you know, sometimes they clash. Whose idea was put that pathetic sign in the window? Me. It's bringing some sort of customers in, right? Yeah. It seems everyone's in agreement with, you know, the light-hearted decisions made by one individual. What Chef Ramsay had to say to Anthony was on point. Sitting back and just listening, you say to yourself, wow, what the hell are we doing? Why did we do this? I'll be back in now. Chef Ramsay feels one way and I feel another. And at the end of the day, the name on the awning is Trobianos. It's not Ramsay. Trobianos has unfortunately become known for one thing and one thing only. It's inexpensive early bird special. How are we doing that? Beautiful. The restaurant is only minutes away from its nightly ritual. Hello, how are you? Were you early? Of course. <laughs> Put you right by the window. Oh, my goodness gracious. One thing all the family agree on is that the food is great. And Anthony, well, he's certainly a confident guy. Now, I may be in for a treat. And right now, it's time for the early bird. Here we go. This is, is this is busy. Yes. Huh? Got there early, aren't they? 4.30. 4.30. Who eats that early, right? Wow. The decor matches the clientele. Drab, fuddy-duddy, yeah, and seriously old-fashioned. I feel like I've come to see my granny in her retirement home. I can't eat dinner at 4.30 in the afternoon. You enjoy your dinner? Well, I'm sure. What would you recommend? The Trobiano salad is excellent. Uh -huh. It's chopped. Yes. Why would you chop it? People seem to love it. Is that because of their teeth? Maybe. <laughs> It must be a nightmare. Knife, fork, there spoon, and straw. Right. <laughs> I can't stand here. <laughs> Still need a few minutes? I know. I think I'm ready. All right. What would Excellent. you like? Uh, first thing, eggplant tower. OK. Then I'll have the chicken wrapped shrimp, please. Finally, some fish. What would you recommend? The salmon's fresh. It comes with potatoes and vegetables or pasta, any pasta you like. But you wouldn't serve spaghetti with the salmon? Yeah, people get it all the time, because they like to take the pasta home, usually. Let's go for the salmon spaghetti bolognese. OK. Excellent. Thank you. Wow. Two for one. What up? You got it. Is he sleeping over there? Is he? Shit. Here we go, right here. Table 10's appetizers, please. All right. I'm very excited to show Chef Ramsay what I can do. I feel that there will be no faults in what I produce for him. There you go. Wow. The eggplant tower. Oh, my God. <laughs> when Chef Ramsay's appetizer was coming out, you could see his face like, what is this shit? I said, oh, my God, we're dead. That's definitely not homemade mozzarella. It's ghastly, stone cold, solid, and tasteless. How are you, madam? How was dinner? Fair. Fair. And what have you got in the bag? What is that? Eggplant parmesan cheese. Oh, lovely. When will you have this? For lunch tomorrow? Yeah. So you're not coming back tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. Because you've got dinner there. <laughs> Rock hard I like mozzarella. your British accent. Thank you. <laughs> I like your lipstick. <laughs> it's great spending time in the company of the Golden Girls. <laughs> oh, the Golden Girls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kevin, bring it out. Wow. Chicken wrap shrimp? Okay. Thank you. Chicken and shrimp. Well, I've got the chicken. And where's the shrimp? Bingo. I'm struggling with that. Looks like chicken, tastes like shrimp. Or oh, shit. Joe. They are solid. I've never had a shrimp that hard. Why would you stick a shrimp inside a chicken? It's one of his creations, I guess. OK. You ready? Jesus. Oh, yes, thank you, yeah. Thank you. Jesus. Your shrimp was too hard. Rock hard, like a bullet. OK. He says, why would you put shrimp inside of a chicken. He says, I don't get it. All right? When the first dish came back, I was, I, I was disgusted, pissed off. I wanted to prove him wrong. I wanted to show him my cooking skills 
you know, are up to par. Somebody please run this fucking food. That's a bolognese. Thank you. And there's a salmon. Thank you. Okay. Christ almighty. Um, dry and absolutely hideous. Pretty silent. Dry. Like, really dry. Okay. Would you mind just... Um, Not a problem. Would you them. like another piece? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Thank you. Your salmon was too dry. He don't want another piece. He said this was brutal. Here you go. You want to taste it? Throw it out. When it came back, I was just too pissed off to even taste it. I was furious at Chef Ramsay saying that my food is shit. Personally, I feel that it's the wrong opinion at this point. I'm fucking furious. I'm furious. It's only 7 p.m. Early bird customers have now left, and at a time when restaurants are usually bustling, Trobiano's is empty. All is quiet, except it's time for the family to hear from Gordon. Let's have a chat uh, together, yeah? One thing that I was absolutely amazed with this evening is the size of the portions. When you serve an entree, you're serving a second entree with it. It's been confirmed to why we don't open for lunch, because you're serving the lunch the night before. So they're robbing you. However, that's not the biggest problem. The food, hideous. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, what, what, what's going on there with that? The eggplant tower, what was wrong? That's not fresh mozzarella. I'm really sorry. That's processed commercial crap. <laughs> Salmon, did you see it when it went back to the kitchen? Yes, I did. Yeah. Just because you may have the inclination that I'm acting like a dick, it was dry. I don't think you're acting like a dick. I just didn't want to taste it myself. It's hard to hear him get yelled at, but Chef Ramsay, he knows what he's talking about, so he should listen to him. Every time a plate comes back to my kitchen, I taste it. And then the worst dish, the shrimp and the chicken. Where'd you go looking for the shrimp? Just seems unique. Now I'm even more concerned about what you're tasting. I thought you had a better palate than the fucking customers in here this evening. It was hideous. You can bust my balls about my ego, but you should not be killing me over my food. I know I'm a great chef. I don't think he knew what he was talking about. OK, I'm out of here. It's been a tough day for everybody. <laughs> Good night, guys. 1495. That's not easy, that. Slapping a family in the face, especially with their half a million dollars in debt, and it's tough. I honestly don't know if I can turn this around. Oh dear. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. <sighs> I don't know. We're so frustrated, we're so worn out, we're so yeah. beat up. We don't know what the fucking direction we're going anymore. Well, obviously, we have to find the right direction because well, we're drowning well, very quickly. Maybe this was a godsend that he came in. Do you know what? There's no way I can sleep. I've got to get back to the restaurant and actually find out what this guy's kitchen's like. What's he working with before I start putting my plan together? As Gordon ventures into the kitchen, the family continues their post-dinner meeting. You need to take criticism better. You can take criticism better. You're like, oh, these people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You don't want to hear it. Right, you don't want to hear it, but you have to, though. Like, you got to take it and be like, maybe I am doing something wrong. This is shocking. When was the last time this was clean inside? My goodness, man. Look at that. The floor is caked with grime. Oh, Christ. Oh, my God. When was the last time this was clean? Bloody hell. Oh, Christ almighty. What on earth is that? Oh, the smell. You know what you do wrong? Just take more, take control. more control of these guys, and I feel that you don't. If you want me to take the control, don't go second guess me about anything that I do. Behind, behind there? Oh my god. Shit. Look at that there. That is mouse or rat droppings. Oh my god. A couple of hours ago, I was feeling slightly embarrassed for them, slightly concerned in a big way, but now. 
When a chef let go of his kitchen like this, it proves he doesn't care. I want to be more involved in the business end of things. Forget the business aspect. Well, that's, Your that's portion is the hosting portion. Hi there. Yeah. yeah. Go on. I was going back to the hotel, couldn't sleep, had a look in the kitchen, and I am absolutely fucking gobsmacked. How can you do that? And then that is? Say that again. What is that? What is that? Come here. Anthony, how can you cook in this? When was the last time this was cleaned? The kitchen? Oh, we try to do it on a daily basis, I mean. What? Have you seen under there? Underneath? Underneath here. Joseph, would you mind having a look? I don't think you've actually seen this. Down there. I see it. Look at that! Oh, God. Please, Anthony, talk to me. Give me some form of feedback. Don't bullshit me. Give me something, please. Well, they're asked to do it every day, the staff. They're what? They're asked to do it every day. We're on our ass with half a million dollars debt, and you're telling me now that you don't even clean. Well, that's what we have staff for, right? Oh, my God. What's this, then? What's that on there? The droppings. They're not fucking caraway seeds. I wasn't unaware of them. Couldn't imagine it was been that bad. From the surface, everything looks nice and nice. When you start digging, I can't just can't believe it. Isn't this your bedrock? Isn't this where it's all created from? You can't create jack shit from here. I swear to God, I don't think you give a fuck. You should be absolutely ashamed. Chef Ramsay came in like a bat out of hell, and again just whipped the living crap out of me. There's only so much you, you could do or say. So why, Anthony? Give me something, please. Oh my goodness, I love you. Come up with an answer, Anthony. Otherwise, I'm fucking out of here. I swear to God, I am fucking out of here. I can't take much more of this shit. Fuck it. You got no chance. I am out of there. I am out of there. Anthony's arrogance and his refusal to take responsibility for his kitchen have pushed Gordon to his breaking point. I am out of there. When Gordon Ramsay walked out, I said that was it. We're finished. We might just fucking burn the place. I don't know what to do. Ramsey, you don't even want to help us. When I saw Chef Ramsey going out to the street, I was feeling a failure. I had to tell him how I felt and just not let this slip through our fingers. What the fuck's going on? Where do we stand? I want to get this place back. Why have you given up then? Tell me. There must be a reason. Because on the ambulance in there, you gave up years ago. Anthony. That's your family in there, right? And each and every one of them believe in you, yeah? Don't you feel bad, honestly? Don't you wake up with sleepless nights? Yeah, I do. I do. Have you ever had that burden on your shoulders? Somebody's house? Not quite to this extent, no. I've been in the industry for 21 fucking years busting my balls. I've made mistakes, yeah? I've had failures, but fuck me. Have but I learned from to, it? Exactly. I'm trying to learn from it. Are you? Yes, I am. By that in there? Come on. Fucking, come on. Fucking, huh? I think you've had it too easy. You want lucky fucking boys to get hold of this restaurant at 25. And I don't see that fucking level of humbleness. Slightly arrogant, fine. But a little bit of humility. You know that. Yeah. Chef Ramsay taught me you need to face reality. You need to realize that maybe you're not the only one involved in everything. Time to get humble and turn the corner. Let's go. We've just had a chat, and now we're going to clean. When that place is clean and you see the difference, you will respect it from a completely different level. Not just the kitchen, the ingredients. 
if that's not working, what chance have we got? Let's do it together. Oh, fuck. Let's go. When I seen Gordon Ramsay come back in, I said, oh, okay. There's still a little ray of hope. Declutter everything. We get rid of all the food first, yeah? If we're gonna give this place a really good clean. At this point, I'll do anything and everything that Chef Ramsay does suggest. He's definitely a, a shot of reality. It's kind of just snapping me back into place. After a stressful night, Gordon chooses an unlikely spot to introduce the family to the first of many changes. What, are we going to slaughter our own beef? <laughs> <laughs> this is one idea, OK, in order to separate your restaurant from any other Italian restaurant anywhere near Great Neck. What do we get from cows? Make Every the milk, the butter, yeah. cheese. What do we do with milk and cheese? What do we make? Uh, uh, no? Mozzarella, exactly. Uh, exactly that. Who's milked a cow before? No one. Oh, my God. <laughs> Miss Glamorous Pat. <laughs> gloves off, please. Gucci gloves off. Look at those gloves. <laughs> Look. <laughs> you could have prepared me a little for this. Oh, my God. Nice and gentle now, yeah? Make sure your hands are warm. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's going on! Just try and keep it in the bucket, but... <laughs> this was so out there to milk your own cow. I feel like you really say something, but I'm... Just... Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm starting to get a little excited here. I never thought I'd see my wife milk a cow. She's over there playing with the others, going, uh, uh, uh. Come on, Tiffany, put both hands, please. Nothing's coming out. Oh, that's Tiffany. I'll just squeeze it. Oh, oh, my God, look at this. I can't believe I'm milking a cow. Oh, you've done that before. No, I just, I watch a lot of westerns. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Anthony, put some muscle into it. This is running away. You're not blaming somebody else again, are you? Come on, you're the chef. <laughs> well done. OK, on the back of last night's scenario, just bringing you four together and having some fun was great because it looked like a family. <laughs> Last night, everyone was in their own little turmoil, so today was really what we needed. This now needs to be pasteurized. We'll take it back and we'll start making our first ever fresh, homemade mozzarella. Ready? Great. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was pathetic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, teats no, are not your strong point, no. right? <laughs> 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 Definitely. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Back at the restaurant, Gordon walks them through the process of making fresh mozzarella. Anthony, push all the way out so it gets really nice and shiny. Perfect. There you go, look. That's it, you got it. I didn't know how to make fresh mozzarella. <laughs> we actually had a nice little learning experience. 45 minutes a day. Chef Ramsay's idea to make fresh mozzarella here is definitely putting a stamp on Trobianos. It's something that people are going to remember, people are going to come for. With a number of bookings for Friday night, Gordon decides it's an opportune time to implement another one of his changes. OK, tonight, take down that sign. <laughs> the early bird's finished. You don't need it. You're running up the restaurant. Not a retirement home. Let's go. Now that the early bird menu is a thing of the past, Gordon introduces pasta and mozzarella specials to the dinner service. OK, spaghetti lobster. I don't want it flooded with a heavy coating of tomato sauce. Yeah, yeah and over here, homemade fresh mozzarella, yes, with caramelized red onions, escarole, bang. Beautiful. All right, two nice specials, yeah? OK, good. Hello, ladies. Going into dinner service, I'm real nervous. I got this buzz going on. We got a lot of things on the line here. So you want a mozzarella special? Yeah, you, you can bring them out with the appetizers here. Yeah. Thank you. Two more specials. Taste, 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 yeah? Yeah, I don't care if it's a fucking sauce or a breadcrumb. You taste, yes? We're looking good, looking good, looking good. Come on. The mozzarella is fresh. They actually milk the cow themselves. Yeah, yeah. 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 it is. Delicious. delicious. Mike, spinach ravioli, lots of ravioli. Eliminating our early bird special is a lot more difficult. We have a lot more dishes to prepare for. I need the lobster special. We need to hurry up. Please. Let's go. Come on, go, 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 go. Anthony, look at me. Taste. You fucking taste. Yes, chef. I gotta watch you. Yeah. I'm probably gonna make a big sign. I think Anthony needs it saying you have to taste the food before it goes out or I'll kick his ass. Okay, we're coming, we're coming. Here we go, here we go. Go. Mike, we got a side of linguine, garlic, and oil coming up. Nine minutes in, right after another. It's busy. 
This guy's getting absolutely slammed, but he can move, huh? He's definitely got talent, but there's one thing this guy hasn't done is taste a thing. From a chef's point of view, how can you serve food out to the customers and not taste anything? Unacceptable. Beyond fucking belief. Now I'm locked out. While Anthony might not be tasting his food, the customers are. I mean, it's all right, you know. Right. And they're not impressed. It's all overcooked. Yes. Special stuff. Right, yeah, it's dry. It seems like it's been around, it's not made fresh. Right. Another, another fettuccine? Yeah, please. Do you think that that would be the best? And he wants to look at the menu, so get him two menus. Right, okay. Anthony, yes. table 17, they're complaining yes. about their food, saying it's, this is too dry. There's two more gentlemen said the same thing, so they're going to look at something else. You got to fucking kidding me. Anthony, you gotta taste this food. Come on. Now, we're playing games here. We're in the business over here. We're getting killed right now. Falling behind big time. It's an hour into dinner service, and a kitchen that is not used to being busy is starting to crumble. All right, it's 25 minutes away. By the time we go, I'm gonna have to go to bed too. Where's my potatoes? Oh, fuck. Uh, you gotta be kidding me. Anthony was definitely getting his ass kicked tonight. Please get it out. Come on. The food was taking too long. People were scrambling because they were trying to rush. Go, 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 go. Hurry up. Oh, fuck. Something's burning. Fire. Oh, my God. That's not good. Joe. Anthony. Oh, uh, fuck you know. With the kitchen already running behind, Michael's burnt entree has brought the dinner service to a grinding halt. Anthony! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, my God. Man. Paula, Paula. Paula. Jesus Christ. We'll regroup here. We'll regroup, OK? On a night filled with more setbacks than successes, Anthony is trying to salvage the evening by pleasing the remaining customers. There's like nothing. I'm ashamed of uh, myself, and I didn't think it was as bad as the clientele found it to be. You know, could be, I guess, blinders that I was wearing. You know how fucking pissed I am. They think tonight was a disaster. You know, it's depressing. And I know we have to change things. I just don't know what to do. Oh, about the my God. Out too slow. Can I have seltzer, please, with the wine? What's the matter? Can you please leave me alone? Please. I'm, I'm begging you to leave me alone. Tiffany and I's relationship has been rocky. The stress that we've been through over the past three years has definitely proved to be the breaking point. If the restaurant were to fail, maybe we don't move on. Maybe that's the end of our road. Oh, my God. Okay, tonight didn't go by without its problems. Anthony, from the first plate that left your kitchen to the last plate, you didn't taste a fucking thing. You can't be that fucking arrogant. It was a travesty. That is your fucking job. And the minute you don't do that, don't call yourself a chef. I never really tasted things beforehand. Never thought it was necessary. I guess that just comes with the cocky and the arrogance of me. You have got to taste. If you're not tasting it, what are the customers experiencing? You know, Anthony should be tasting his food. He should know why the clientele is complaining. It's just hurting my business, and it's hurting my family. Tomorrow, we have to be different, Anthony. It separates you from being average to something quite special. If you thought tonight was busy, whew, hey, God help you, because we are relaunching this restaurant tomorrow. I know it's late. Get some sleep. A big day tomorrow. See you in the morning. Good night. I feel like it can't get any worse than it is now. Hopefully tomorrow is going to be a new beginning for everybody. In preparation for the relaunch, Gordon's team worked through the night updating Troviano's stodgy interior. Good morning. Good morning. Right, big day today. Relaunch yes. day. A lot of changes. You didn't like this place when I first arrived. Yeah? You didn't like the decor, didn't like the lighting, and it was bland. Are you ready for a change? Yes. Let's go. Come through. Oh, Come through. My God. Out with the old, in with the new. Oh my God, holy shit! It's warm, 
Yes, I couldn't believe what I seen. I was definitely in the wrong place. I was dreaming. Everything was unbelievable. The chairs, the, the table forts, the boots. I mean, everywhere you look was beautiful. Oh, look at this! Oh. That's Italy on there, yes? Oh. You're running an Italian restaurant, so we're gonna have some authentic Italian pictures on the wall. I used to hate this place. I used to hate coming in here, but now with the new decor, everything just goes really well together. So everything is just perfect. It's romantic, it's warm, and more importantly, it's sexy. This is great. <laughs> Look at this! That is a mozzarella bar. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you happy? Happy. It's good, man. Good, good man, good man. Yep, yep. <laughs> Come here. No, I'm happy. I'm not crying. I, know, I, know, I, know. I just can't believe it. I can't. It's more than I've ever, ever expected. It's beautiful. It's a total fresh start. You know, we're, we're going to take from today and just keep moving forward. OK, good. The menu, absolutely crucial. We've condensed it, and it's simple and rustic. Oh, my God. God. OK, no more salmon and bolognese sauce. It's authentic. Portions have been trimmed, and they're sensible portions. He showed us the menu. Wow. It was downsized. The prices were better. It's beautiful. It's all in place now. Tonight is where it's got to work. I'm a little nervous for Anthony. This is where he has to show what he's made of, so hopefully he can get that done. Coming up, with relaunch upon them, Trobianos is finally put to the test. The editor-in-chief of the Bonavitee magazine. They want to join us for dinner. Oh, my God. This could be a great opportunity for Trobianos, or it could be the final nail in the coffin. Can Anthony and the staff rise to the occasion? The most important risotto you've made in your fucking life. Or will they crack under the pressure? What's the matter? This was cold in the coming. middle. Uh, Just when it was going perfectly well, a fucking soul comes back. And at the end of service, a shocking surprise that will change this family for years to come. I was shocked. I never expected this in a million years. In preparation for the big relaunch, Gordon introduces the staff to the new dishes. Gone are the shrimp and the chicken and the dried out salmon. In their place, authentic Italian dishes. The sole, spicy roast potatoes, rosemary garlic, salmon, the ribeye steak, and the lamb ragu. Homemade mozzarella. We've got hundreds of balls of fresh mozzarella. Right, have a taste. Mm. Wow, this is good. Taste is salad, Joe. That's good, yeah. Oh my god, salad. everything is so delicious. OK, guys, it is going to be a very important night, and it is absolutely crucial we stay together on it. Uh, one more thing. I had a phone call from the editor-in-chief of the Bon Appetit magazine. Uh, they want to join us for dinner. Wow. Oh, my God. I'm very nervous about tonight. You know, when he just told us about the critic coming, that scares the hell out of me. This is a real chance to put this place on the map. Just under six million people read that magazine per month. Tonight, I have to make sure Anthony stays on the right track with his cooking, with his tasting of the food. Everything is on the line. This could be a great opportunity for Trobianos, or it could be the final nail in the coffin. How are you? Good, good. Hi, how are you? I'm Joe. How you doing? How you doing? Oh, it looks nice. It looks just like a Manhattan to cook. And I want to take I just wanted to tell you we're trying something new. We have a mozzarella bar. Here we go. Let's go. So they got one each. So six slices in there, six slices on there. Yeah. Excellent. See? Bang. Yeah, 30 seconds, $80. Right. Off you go. Gotcha. There's one for you and one for you. What? This, is, this is delicious, though. <laughs> Another one? Yeah, for four. Can't believe how well this has gone. This yeah. is unbelievable. It's extraordinary. I'm going to fill up on the appetizer. Right, right. <laughs> right yeah, follow him behind with chicken parm. You got one ragu coming up. You tasting the food? Please tell me you taste it. Taste the fucking stuff, man. It's very important to keep the standards high. We have to impress a lot of people. We got a lot of things on the line here. No, I want to make sure they're tasting the shit. I got to watch them now. With Trobianos busier than it has been in years, the pressure is now on Anthony to keep up with the orders. But his staff must come through for him as well. Four. Kevin, table four. I have no idea what that is, bro. See, well, yeah, with vegetables, sorry. Danny, I have two 16s. Does not make sense, buddy. What's going on here? The wait staff here is killing me. Anthony, you can't read the fucking thing. Give it back to him, yeah? Yes. Here, take them, rewrite it right here. Quick, Kevin. Got to get these tickets sorted, otherwise you're going to get fucked in 15 minutes, yeah? Yes, sir. Yes. While Anthony gets the staff in line. Are they finished with it? So is it fired right away? I need to know. Joe scans the dining room looking for the Bon Appetit table. Any sign of Bon Appetit yet? Oh, yeah, good. Eyes open, yeah? Tony? Yes, sir. Start pushing out these entrees now, yeah? Yes, you're on top of it now. Just stay on top of it, yeah? How we doing, baby? Done? Yeah. 
Best care. All right, enjoy. Oh, wow. Now, why can't I make fish like this? Please watch that. Yeah, potential, yeah? Potential critic, yes? This and this, very nice. Go, 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 go. Yes, sweetie. Is it really? I'm so sorry. Okay, no problem. Excuse me? Yes, what's the matter? This what's was wrong? cold in the middle. What table is that? Ten. Table off. ten. Oh, shit. Hey, just when it was going perfectly well, the fucking soul comes back. When the dish came back, the only thing that was running through my head was whether it was the bon appetit table. The traditional stuff is very good. Yeah, chicken parmesan, very good. We want all the pastas, the pork chops, lamb, to give everybody a little taste. You wanted one of each? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, no problem. You're welcome. How do you know it's them? Uh, they ordered everything on the menu. And they're asking questions. They're asking questions, they're ordering a lot of wine. That is definitely a food critic. Anthony, table nine is six people. One of them, I think, is the critic. Step it up, yeah? Yes. Bounce back, come on. Let's go. OK, we're going to do table nine, a very, very, very important table. All right, here we go. Three minutes on the pasta, Tony. Looking good, looking good. Anthony, yeah, what's that risotto, yes? Yes, chef, yes. Hey, the most important risotto you've made in your fucking life. Look at that, huh? Beautiful. Table nine, risotto and ragu. I need a second bus boy, please, quickly. Nine, please. Wow. That's Everything's on the line tonight, and if we don't make it, then, you know, it's just going to be a disaster. Oh, that looks lovely. It's the relaunch dinner, and Tiffany has just delivered entrees to the editor-in-chief of Bon Appetit. Now all the family can do is hope. I'm very nervous about the critics. I really do think that my business is at stake tonight. It's either going to make us or break us. I have a taste of the fish, Victoria. And the fish and the chicken are really winners. Thank you. And it's not overcooked. No, it was nicely cooked. It's good. Asking lots of questions, and more importantly, they're passing food round, which is a great sign. Yep. Not happy with it, you don't pass it. How is the bash? You like it? Yeah. Very good, right? Yes. Yeah. That was a nice recommendation. Good, yeah. thank you. Any complaints? No, no complaints at all. It's great that they're here, you know that. Huh? It's fantastic. It's amazing. No, it's a dream. Five. Beautiful, beautiful. Awesome. I was at an all time high with Bon Appetit, knowing that if this positive review comes out, that it's going to put Trobianos above and beyond where we ever imagined. With a wealth of satisfied customers and a good response from Bon Appetit, Trobiano's relaunch is a success. But Chef Ramsay knew that Anthony still had some unfinished business. The restaurant's on his way. Tonight proved that. But there's one more thing. Look at this. <sighs> beautiful. Wow, beautiful. Make an honest woman of her. <sighs> Shaken. This is unbelievable. This is coming from you? Yeah. To us? You've forgotten about it. And if there's one thing that's missing, it's that. And I know personally how long you've been putting it off because of the pressure from the restaurant. That is going to put an end to it, OK? Yeah. Speechless. Thank you. Get up there. Stand strong. Tiffany's a great girl. She's put up with me for the past three years. There was no better time than tonight to go ahead with this. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to our chef patron, Anthony Tomriano. I just want to thank everyone for coming here. Um, you can see we've come a long way thanks to uh, Chef Ramsay here. And we've moved in such a positive direction that there's just one thing in my life that, that hasn't been official. Tiffany? I was 
shocked that Anthony proposed to me in front of everybody. It was just incredible. I never expected this in a million years. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> it totally touched me to see Anthony propose to Tiffany, and I know this is what he's wanted. It's just unbelievable. It's a dream come true. You better make my daughter happy. <laughs> what do you mean? I'll fucking kick your ass. I have one more surprise for both of you. I've arranged for both of you to get married tonight. <laughs> We were just totally shocked with all the excitement of everything else going on. To top it off with a wedding? Come on. I thought I was going to die. Right? <laughs> oh my God, this is crazy. I love Anthony. I've been waiting for this for six years. We have a new life to start, so everything should just fall into place now. Tiffany and Anthony have come together to proclaim their undying love through the celebration of their marriage. I am filled with so many emotions. It was an amazing night. Son-in-law. It's unbelievable. There's no other word to describe all of this, really. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say this family has been a pleasure to work with. Chef Ramsey did definitely save our lives. you got to be kidding me. If he didn't come here, Six months from now, we've probably been closed. I'm grateful, my family's grateful, and I hope this is a new beginning for all of us. Wow, amazing. I've seen many a dream turn into a nightmare. Tonight, a nightmare turned into a beautiful dream. 30 miles north of Detroit lies the township of Macomb County, home to Giuseppe's. Its owners, Joe Borgia and his wife, Kathy, have owned several successful Italian restaurants in the span of 25 years. After retiring, they decided to open Giuseppe's with the dream of passing it down to their son, Sam. I opened it with the expectations that we would put Sam on his feet and Joe and I could just go to Florida or wherever, but it just hasn't worked out that way. Sam basically said, Dad, I'm going to step up to the plate. I want to work day and night. You and Mom can come a little bit at a time. But when they started working 20 hours a week, to me, it was like uh, another empty promise. You want to go get your son? Because every time we, I try to explain, he's got to walk away. Sam, did you walk off the line? No. It's a nightmare for two reasons, the lack of customers and the hell that goes out in the kitchen. You're serving frozen fucking salmon. I mean, no matter what you do, you can boil it in grease. No, no It's still no, going to be cooking. No, I prove okay. you wrong. You prove me wrong, then. I'm not supposed to have no input. I'm not supposed to be able to change anything. Usually people roast them on the barbecue. No, that's the way you do it. I'm just supposed to basically be a shadow and somebody that he can just say it's your fault. OK, Dan, whatever you say. I'm Brian. I'm a truck driver, but I chef here part time. Right here, Joe. I've known Joe for forever. He's getting up there a little bit in years, and he's just he's getting tired. And I don't think that his son is stepping up to the plate. I'm not. They just are pushing me too many hours. They're not pushing you. You're pushing you. I'm a diabetic. Some days I don't feel like coming in. Some days I can't even roll out of bed. But I have to be here. That's my responsibility. My sugar is low. I'm fucked up. Here. I got, it. I got it. My dad's health is not good by any standards. And it's the most heartbreaking thing to see. I just want my family to be healthy and happy. Everything else doesn't matter. If anybody can help our family, it would probably be Chef Ramsey. I'm here to work with a family in a restaurant that's in crisis. The kitchen's run by father and son, and they're constantly at each other's throat. The mother's torn between them both. She's actually here to pick me up. Wow, he's got a smile. That's, got, that's a good sign. I was excited and nervous, but I knew once he was here, everything was going to be fine. Nice to see you, my darling. And thank you so much for coming to pick me up. Now, the restaurant's run by Joe, your yeah, husband. My husband, Joe Giuseppe. And Joe's the head chef, and Sam's the sous chef. Exactly. Is Sam taking over from Joe, or...? Well, that was the plan, but yeah. it's not happening. And I'm sure Sam's a little disappointed. Well, he's 28. You must be ready for it now, surely. He's about the maturity of about a 23-year-old. Right. He's not ready. And the restaurant's only been open for two years? Yeah. And I'm in debt big time. I got my house in foreclosure. I owe about $150,000 outside of that. Outside the I house? I don't mind losing a house if I can sleep anywhere. 
but the business. That's everything I have. And at my age, I can't start over again. How does um, Joe feel about this? He's miserable inside. Damn. If this place fails, I don't even know if we'll be together anymore. And this is it? This is it. This is my little play. Hope you brought your magic wand. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. I think Chef Ramsay may be overwhelmed this time. It's not just as simple as a menu change or firing somebody. I think it's a little more complex. And I think this is where you'll be. OK, great. That Palomino sauce, Sam. I know you don't want to listen to me. Yeah, I do exactly you, how you, you say You put way too much white wine on it, and that's why you're getting the burn You told me to put the white wine. With Joe overseeing the kitchen, Sam will be cooking a menu designed by his father for Chef Ramsay. I think Chef Ramsay is going to come in here, order a few things, and he's going to say they're horrible. Welcome to Giuseppe's tutorial. Please allow my family and I to introduce you to the essence of Italy. <laughs> the old world family recipes and cozy atmosphere. This place has only been open for two years. It looks like something from the 1970s. Hello. Hi, how are I'm you? I'm nice John. to meet nice you. Nice to see you. And you're one of the servers, obviously. I am one of the servers. Excellent. What would you recommend, my darling? I would recommend the eggplant rollantini. That's our house specialty. OK, great. And um, I'll start off with the potato skins and the octopus salad. OK. And I'll keep hold of the menu, because I'm, okay. uh, I'm going to read on. OK. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Essence of Italy, my ass. What do we got? We need octopus salad, yeah. potato skins. OK. That's first, and I'll guide you through. When I saw Chef Ramsay ordered octopus salad, every part of me wanted to say, we're out of it. Can you please take the salad out of the window, please? But how would that look? Mm, wow. Octopus salad. That was quick. Dad. Thank you, my darling. Enjoy. Thank you. Cheese. The octopus is like rubber. Excuse me. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's like a mouthful of hubba bubba. It should be done in a frying pan very slowly. Like, I got it, I got it, Dad. Let me get this. Potato skin? Mm. Is that normally that chewy, that octopus? I think it is. I've heard people say that before. Would you be my guest? Just to I'll be your guest. Please, my darling. Very tough. Huh? Mm hmm When I tasted it, I'm like, oh my gosh, we serve this shit. <laughs> I mean, basically, that's what it was. That's what it tasted like. Horrible. Octopus is chewy. Horrible. And how are the potato skins? The cheese is um, hideous. Not good? Yeah, would you like to try one? No, I don't. I've had enough. How are we doing, guys? Octopus is shit. That is chewy. These are hideous, too. Cheese is disgusting. Oh, boy. I always brag about how good my food is and how good my restaurant is. And if they don't step up to the plate, I am going to cook every individual dinner in this restaurant. Put it in my grill for a little yeah. bit. Eggplant Rolantini. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome. Thank you. I, I think it's too much wine. I mean, that's my personal You think idea. it's too much wine? I, you know, I... If Make a new one. I can't really identify any flavors because it's just absolutely piping hot, almost like it's been nuked in the microwave for three minutes. I can cook every dish that he had, and I guarantee you he's going to love every one of them. What the hell's going on in there? And why aren't you back here? Well, because maybe they should try you out, see, you know, what's going on. Honestly, sounds like there's a war going on. It's incredible. Uh, never this many fucking complaints yeah. in two fucking years. Relax. Relax my ass. God damn it. Fucking ears. Coming up. Family's one thing, we're in the business. Family tensions boil over. I want to be the best chef, but I want you to be my father, too. Joe deals with his deteriorating health. He can't do it anymore, man. What the shit? Sugar is low, I'm fucked up. Diabetes is the worst disease you can have. You know, I've been with that insurance since we opened this restaurant. Can Gordon bring this family together? Is Sam a good chef? He's, he, he likes to cook. Or is this restaurant... Don't overcook it. It's well done, Sam. It looks like shit. ...and family... What can you show me to set up balls? ...beyond repair. I've been fucking doing that shit since I was 13. Nice to you. You don't see me? See what, Sam? You don't see me? After sensing Gordon's disappointment with lunch, the family regroups in the kitchen. We gotta stop being the mother, the husband, the son. 
family is one thing, we are in the business. Yeah, you're and right. And if you think that it's that responsibility to be the chef, you better be the goddamn best fucking chef on this side of Mississippi. I want to be the best chef okay. on this side of it. It's where I'm missing you. But I want you to be my father, too. You know, I just want to grab my dad and give him a hug and say, look, it's going to be all right. You just got to trust in me a little bit. Now it's time for Joe, Sam, and Sue Chef Brian to hear the cold, hard truth from Chef Ramsay. Hello, sir. How are you? Nice to meet you. You said on the back of the menu, step into Giuseppe's, and I'm going to take you through a romantic, authentic restaurant in Italy. I like the passion, but the palate's fucked. That eggplant, bland, milky, spongy, and then piping hot in the middle like it had been blasted in the microwave. It and was. Just... It was? Yeah. So you don't bake them fresh? No. Chef, we got probably 3,000 respond that we did this questionnaire, and we didn't get one negative thing about the food. So where the fuck are they, then? I don't know. You don't need questionnaires. They don't ring you up and say, by the way, I'm not coming back. They just don't come back. They vote with their feet. Why are we serving potato skins? Do I want to come to an authentic Italian restaurant with potato skins? Absolutely not. A lot of people come here with their kids, and their kids don't want to... Uh... Hey, I've lived in Italy. I've seen the Italian families, the way they eat together. They don't serve fucking children in Italy potato skins with plastic cheese, I can assure you. There's no fucking reason to have potato skins on an Italian menu. Joe, I'm not asking for excuses. I'm here to help. Yeah. But everything I'm saying, all you're doing is firing me bullshit excuses. Don't bullshit me, and I won't bullshit you. Do you understand? Yes. I got told in the car, oh, the pressure's facing this place. But I can see why we're in this shit. The food's crap, guys. I thought I had a job to do, but now it's just become 10 times fucking bigger. Yes, sir. I'll see you later on this afternoon. Get some rest. Thank, Thank you, sir. You, Giuseppe may have been born in Italy, but he's certainly not delivering Italian authentic cuisine here in Michigan. He may say it on the back of the menu, but he's not delivering in flavor. That's for sure. Before Gordon can formulate his plan to turn around the restaurant, he wants to see a dinner service and the staff in action. How are you today? Good, how are you? Hi, how are you? My name is Carol. Does that come off that thing? <laughs> Looks like a cockatoo. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Three? Yeah. Not a problem. Hi, how are you? Everything OK here so far? Good. You ready, honey? Oh, yeah. I would like to add meat sauce. Meat sauce? Thank you, dear. Thank you. I don't know, baby, and here we go. What's up there? Everyone's going to be uh, so, order roast potato. How can there be roast potatoes in the microwave? That's the program here. That's what Giuseppe wants. Has he lost his fucking marbles? And my dad feels like he just needs to push the food out real fast, you know? He wants his mouth cheese in the microwave. But you can't take shortcuts like that. Well, it's horrible, you know? Food comes out quick. Is that normal? Really quick. Too yeah. quick, I think. And what would you like? I'll have the uh, ravioli florentine. Thank you. Sometimes salads or soups, and then their main entree comes all at once. I would like the uh, gnocchi. You guys want to do the wings as well? Enjoy, okay? I always nice. call it fast food Italian. Fast food Italian, yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong there. The sauce is warm, but the inside is. It needs to be warmed up. Okay, honey. Hey, Brian, can you please warm this for me? Yeah. More crap. Don't want it, don't want a review. That was a ravioli with Alfredo. The pillows are hard. Why do we have so much problem with that? I, I, I don't get it. Brian. Yes. The inside's a little bit on the cool side. OK. Can I put it in the microwave? Unbelievable. Two things I can definitely confirm. The first thing is they're fast. Unfortunately, too fast for their own good. The second thing is when they're fast, they're sloppy. But the 12 dishes have come back, and this place is about to explode. Unbelievable. Is everything OK tonight? Um, I don't know if I like this too much. Do you want something else? It's a little bit too lemony. I'll be right there. Excuse me, I'm going to have a reorder here a little too lemony. Maybe we should stick to one goddamn <laughs> recipe. Maybe mouth. we should. Put your ingredients on. A little bit of olive oil. What, just straight olive oil, or you want? Like a caramelity mix. Did you put your salt, pepper, and garlic in here? Yes. Garlic through. I got it. I was trying to ask you what you wanted well, to add. If I say calamari mix, you should know what I mean. I didn't hear calamari mix. That's what I said. To see my father not trust me 
was just getting downright frustrating. I don't know what else to show my father. This is supposed to be blackened. It wasn't blackened, and that's all fat. You need a new steak? What do they say? I need an O. Did you want another steak? Yes. OK, medium rare, blackened. Sammy, you know what blackened means? Dad, I put it on a flat top. I put the Cajun seasoning on. I put it on there, and I cook both sides medium rare, blackened. Is that what blackened is? I do need another steak. Medium rare, blackened. OK, I get very it. Very blackened, very I spicy. I get it. Whatever. Yeah. Where's the Cajun spice? I got it over here. Sam is like a new puppy that you have to constantly pay attention to him. This is a joke. He's now ready to run the business. Why don't we ever have towels in this line? There's a towel right there. I won't even wipe my There's ass towels. with it. There's towels right there. There's a towel down here. Joe did not like. What the hell? How's that steak on that redo? You want me to cook it? It doesn't come out of my ass, OK? All right. I hope it doesn't come out of your ass. Don't touch your steak. What the hell? Sam, get your ass out of there. Let's try to make him happy. Joe, did not like. After multiple dishes are returned, Joe kicks Sam out of the kitchen. OK, Sam, get your ass out of there. And takes matters into his own hands. You want to make somebody happy, and that somebody happens to be your father. You want to make him proud of you. You want to make him believe in you, but I don't know how to do that after 28 years. And I'm still trying. Now I'm really seriously starting to understand what it's like behind the scenes in the kitchen. You've got Brian there and Sam cooking fine, but too fast for their own good. All of a sudden, Joe walks in, marks his orders, and then disappears. But when he walks in, they all stand to attention, and he talks them like dirt. Unfortunately, that dirt's his son, Sad. Right, that was tough. We've got ourselves in a real horrible rut cooking in that kitchen because it's just slamming food. I've never seen so much food go in a microwave in all my life. It's like no one's striving to be better. You tell me how you feel about the frozen food. I hate it. I'm embarrassed to say it's my food. Why don't you tell Dad that you want to cook fresh? Dad, I want to cook fresh. I want to cook fresh. Is Sam a good chef? He's, he, he likes to cook. I don't want my children insulted, whether it's true or not. It cuts me. And only a mother would understand that. And what's his weaknesses? You're not committed. You put 25 hours a week. I used to work that when, my, when I had my first restaurant one day. Why haven't you been committed? My father doesn't really talk to me that much. And you know, I, I feel that you, sometimes you hate me. No, I, I don't, don't want to be I don't talk to you. to you because you don't put enough time here to get involved. Where's your fire in your belly? I mean, why can't you show me the same set of balls that I had and just go up there and try to make something out of it? I've been fucking doing that shit since I was fucking 13 next to you. You don't see me? You don't see me? See what, Sam? I've been scrubbing floors next to you. I've been wanting you to fucking notice me for how long. I don't know. How many times you looked at me and said, hey, holy fucking shit, good job. Not once. They just won't tell me about that You're bullshit. Long, you're not here long enough to do that, Sam. I'm not long enough for you to say good fucking job one time? Come on. I don't, I don't know what else to say. No matter what, there's always a complaint. I have not served him anything without him saying it's not done right. It, it hurts. I mean, still, to this day, I'm almost 30 years old, and that stupid shit hurts. We've got our cards out on the table. Now I want to see the passion. I want to see that little bit of flame relit. The light's back on. OK. In the morning, Gordon wants to focus his attention on Joe. Before the customers come in, let's have two minutes together. Not his battles with his son, but his battle with a crippling disease. How does it affect you, that level of diabetes? Diabetes is the worst disease you can have. I got pain in my legs every day. And you have a, a proper medical insurance? No, I don't. Oh, come on. I don't. I 
okay, we can afford that. I cut it off. You know, I've been with that insurance for, you know, since we opened this restaurant. God's sake. You know, rest is the first thing you need. You can't be here seven yeah. days a week. I built this restaurant. And I've been putting in 70 hours a week. I would like my son to run this restaurant and me kick back. But Sam doesn't follow through, and now I'm stuck with this thing on my shoulder, and I'm keep on digging until I dig myself out. You can't be a fucking master. I know. Hey, you've got to look after yourself. You know, you keep me posted on how you're feeling. Yeah. OK? Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Before Gordon can turn around Giuseppe's... I want to turn up a notch. He needs to test Sam's abilities... I want to cook off. ...and reignite Joe's passion. Both of you, cook something unique, anything you want. The front of the house staff, I'm going to taste. They won't know who's cooked what, but what they will know is which dish is the best, because that dish tonight is going on as a special. Ready? Let's go. When Chef Ramsay said that we were going to have the cook-off, I kind of just wanted to do something simple but bold and hopefully impress Chef Ramsay and impress my father on top of it. Everything hand-bought, freshly made pasta, fresh lasagna, fresh salmon, asparagus, double pork chops, garlic, basil. Blow me away. OK. I saw the salmon just caught out of the water maybe two hours ago. I had to go for the salmon. I love it. I used to take center cup pork chop, and I sear some scallops with some pancetta, with some uh, Italian sausage and provolone cheese. OK, let's go. OK, right, two dishes. First one's a broiled salmon with asparagus coated in egg, finished with provolone cheese, and the salmon has been charbroiled. Next to that, we've got a pork chop stuffed, served on the side with grilled potatoes and gratinated with provolone cheese. Take a taste and then pass it down, yeah? I was confident in my dish because I always cook with a little flair and a little flavor to it. OK. We're going to start with, uh, Mum, out of both dishes, which one would you choose as a special? I would take the pork chop, put it with the potatoes, not the pasta, with the asparagus. Mm -hmm. So a bit of both. That's a fair answer. Diplomat. OK. Brian, out of both dishes, which one would you choose? The uh, pork chop. Pork chop? Yes. Right, darling, which one would you choose? Definitely the pork chop and the mushrooms. OK. Feed it the pork chop. Tony, out of both dishes, which one would you choose? Um, I would have to say the salmon. Mm -hmm. Salmon? Yes, sir. OK, Dawn. If I was just looking at the menu and hadn't tasted them, I would probably go with the salmon. But after tasting it, I'd go with the pork chop. Right. Well done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, really well done. Yeah. Huh? Sure, I was a little disappointed. I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, I want him to be better than me because I need someone to look up to. I need a mentor in my life. My choice out of both those dishes, they're both good enough to go on this menu tonight. Yes? That's what's going to happen. Two specials. Congratulations. You're the man. Good dish. I wish he would have won, to tell you the truth. You know, which is dish looked really good. Tonight, you're going to be cooking your father's special. Make sure you know the dish inside out. You got it. I'm real fired up. Not only because we're putting a new item out there that everybody's going to taste, but me and my father are going to work together on each other's dishes, and I know they're going to be excellent. With everyone feeling good about tonight's specials, Gordon begins to work on another problem of this restaurant's, the lack of communication between Joe, Sam, and Kathy. I'm here to help. But it's, you know, it's it, every hour it's changing because I've never, ever quite come across such a difficult a restaurant situation in all my life. Because the restaurant's one thing, but the biggest problem is the family. And what I want you to do is I want you to write a letter and say in that letter what you really want to say to them both. Write that letter for me. I will. Please. I will. And don't show any of them it. I won't. My objective tonight is to push the specials. You've got one made for the father and one from the up-and-coming son. I want to make sure that you sell them. With Joe momentarily out of the kitchen, Gordon sees a chance to speak with Sam. Hey, we'll just give you two minutes, to, uh, Drew. Yeah. Tonight, when you get out of here, when you get home, I want you to tell me in a letter to your father, yeah, what you really 
feel about him? What kind of figure that guy is in your life? Good. I want you to put it on paper for me, discreetly. And I mean discreetly. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. First customers are here, yeah? Here we go, yeah? Booth over here, OK? We're going to put the pork okay. and the scallop on top. Right. Um, I am going to try the salmon. Okay. Jesus, that'd be special. That'd be special as well. Thank you. OK, here we go. You're going to be expediting in and out, and you're on the line, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Good. Good man. So it's going to be two pork Giuseppe. OK, two pork Giuseppes. All right, let's show them what we're made of. Olive oil, salt and pepper. Very nice. What a breath of fresh air. Every dish like that, yes? Yes, sir. Salmon, enjoy your meal. Two salmon, two porks. You got it. Mm, I really like the pork chop. Don't overcook it, Sam. It's just boom, 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 done. Once again, Joe can't give up control of the kitchen. It's well done, Sam. Instead of expediting and making sure orders are filled quickly, he's at the stove cooking Sam's dishes. It took 25 minutes for a calamari. Joe, are you expediting? No, not really. I can't read without my glasses. Your glasses around your neck. This is his heart. This is his place. But he's got to learn that he can't always be in the middle of the action. I can't do it anymore, man. What's wrong, brother? Oh, shit. He's going to kill himself. Sugar is low, or I'm fucked up. Joe, expedite and let Sam cook. Jesus Christ. Want to switch? I'll, I'll dress him up. Well, right? I can see, man. I got I the fucking things back in on. I got them. Oh. Chef Ramsey wanted Joe to expedite, but that's the Italian in him. Never let go, never give up, never surrender. Help me pull him off. Right. Because that's the only way. I mean, literally, we got to pull him off. Right. How'd you get him off that stove? He's magnetized that. Is that a steak? It's well done. I don't like that steak. I don't like it. It's well done, Sam. It looks like shit. Sam. Yeah. Kick him off that. I'm sorry, dude. But your fucking sugar's up. You got to get off. Thank you. With Joe finally off the line. If that kid, we don't let him stand and fail a few times, he's never going to stand up. Sam and Brian regain control of the kitchen. Look at that, my friend. There you go, Sammy. And finish the service. Oh, wow. Very good. And while the staff was cleaning up. Two seconds. Gordy cornered Joe. Is it your wish that one day Sam takes over? Yeah. I want you to go home and just write a short letter how you feel about him, what he means to you, and what you want him to be one day. I want you to talk from the heart, and you've got to keep it between you and I. I will. I will. Even though the specials were a big success, this restaurant still has a long way to go before it's ready for relaunch. Tonight wasn't good enough for this restaurant. If we're going to establish any form of longevity, I know we can all do better. Tomorrow, we are going to do better. We're going to relaunch and market this place. So you get yourself off to bed, yeah? So you're going to work for a change? I mean, you're going to. <laughs> you're such a Rottweiler. <laughs> I swear to God. OK, good night. Immediately after the family and staff left, Chef Ramsay's team went into high gear, working through the night to transform Giuseppe's into a contemporary Italian eatery. What a beautiful morning for a relaunch. How are we? Good. When I first arrived, the restaurant was dated, and it was almost like you'd opened a dated restaurant. This is what you call a modern, contemporary Italian. Are you ready to see the new Giuseppe's? Yeah. Yes. Yes? Good. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come through. Woohoo! Look at this. Holy. Oh, my Isn't it beautiful? God. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it was claustrophobic. Now, it's a modern, contemporary Italian restaurant. I just couldn't believe that something like this could be done in just the time that I slept. I'm totally taken back by this. This is like a different place. New bar stools, new drapes. New chairs. Nice new chairs. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. He's holding Sammy. He's just born. When I saw my father look at the pictures of me and him when I was a little boy, you know, when I saw a tear come to his eyes, I almost lost it. You feel like you're stepping inside something historic. Now it's modern, I it, I yes? Love it. I love it. Run by a, an amazing family, Joe. I just, I, I don't know how you do stuff like that. You deserve it, my man. Come here, you. Huh? <laughs> and you just doing it. Huh? Is it lovely? It's beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. Huh? I'm so happy because now we have a real chance. It's a new beginning. This is beautiful. <laughs> Something even more important now. Marketing. 
in order to relaunch this restaurant, we're going to host the first ever Giuseppe's Bolathon with the American Diabetes Association. Yes? I'm overwhelmed. You know, Bolathon for diabetes, which I uh, lost my brother and my mom. So it's, it's, it's a big thing. Bolathon for diabetes. It took your brother, it took your mother. It's not taking my it's father. It's not taking you. Hi, guys. Hello. Nice to see you. Come through. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you so much for being part of our first ever Giuseppe's Bowlathon. We were greeted by a warm crowd cheering for us like we were some celebrity. You guys hungry? There you go. It was great to see my father passing out soups and talking to the customers and getting them all excited about our restaurant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. I have no words for this, but I'm glad that you guys are here and uh, helped spread the word about diabetes. We're going to fight it. And we help the real people, we're going to do it. After the success of the first ever Giuseppe's Bolathon, Chef Ramsay and the staff return to the restaurant to prepare for the relaunch. The condensed menu, it's fresher, it's quicker, it's smaller, and more importantly, it's 10 times more exciting. The classic soups, pasta violi, minestrone soup, that's the heartbeat of the restaurant. Okay, the chicken, parmesan, look at that. It's a new way, modern and something complete. When Chef Ramsay presented our new menu, and I saw that all the old bullshit was off, I was excited. We're at 2008 now, and here's the menu to prove it. More importantly, if this restaurant's got a chance of survival, we've got to communicate and stick together tonight. Right now, I'm so excited. I feel like I'm 18 years old again. <laughs> One, two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. For tonight's dinner service, Chef Ramsay has assigned Sam to run the line and Joe to expedite. We've been given every opportunity. Now it's time for me to step up to the plate and knock it out of the park. Hello. Welcome to the new Giuseppe's Trattoria. Are you ready to order? Fettuccine and Seafood platter? Seafood platter, wonderful. I'm ready to rock and roll. This is a very, very important night. It's not just about the relaunch of Giuseppe's. It's a transition. That's what's got to take place tonight. Will Sam step up to the mark? And can Joe let go and give Sam the confidence to run this place? Time will tell. All right, I got three Marcellas coming right now. I need them, baby. Only 30 minutes into service. Medium well is coming right after. And stubborn Joe is on the line cooking again. Yeah, do you want to get off the line? We got it. I got three Marcellas coming on the fly. I need them, Sammy. Dad, get off the line. Oh, Marcella, coming hard. Dad, it's not going to be you on the line, you understand? My father wasn't letting go. He doesn't need to be back there right in the action. If anything, he's making things more complicated. Priority, chicken Marcella. What's wrong? It's wrong. Oh, fuck no. Sam. Yes? Not now, buddy. I've got pink chicken. OK. Come Sorry on. about that. Come on, come on. Slow it down. I'd rather wait an extra five minutes and send out fucking pink chicken. Yes, sir. Take your time. I'm having a problem with the lasagna. The ricotta is actually cold. Hey. Hey, you guys. Yes, ma'am. They need this cooked more. All right. They yes, said it's cold. Yes, ma'am. Don't rush it. We're not rushing. Yeah, we are. We're going right back. This grill sucks. Dan, do you want to get off the line? This thing is awful, Sam. Dan, that char roller, I've made the best things in the world off of it. I was, again, seeing the same thing. My dad getting worn out. Getting angry. Yeah, go. We got it. If we can't handle it, then we shouldn't be here. And it was really starting to get to me. Joe. Joe, two seconds. Yeah. They have to learn to do it without you. Yeah? Take 10 minutes out, get All some right. fresh air. Please. Hey, they're fine. Get out. Please. They have to learn. All right, I got this shit cracking. I just got to get a few more working, OK, please? Do it, man. Come on. Send it, man. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Get out. Fucking hell. If I was rich, you sure the hell wouldn't be here? Well, I'd still be here. There. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Steve, we got time on this bread? Sit down. I've got the bread. Fucking hell, that guy's unbelievable. Unbelievable. 
This guy is incredible. He had to leave the line, he's down and out, and he's beat. So they've got to step up to the mark, and it's now or never for those guys. They've got to do it for Joe, the restaurant, and more importantly, for themselves. Come on. There you are. Thank you. You're welcome. That table was here half an hour after us. Enjoy. And we still haven't received our food yet. Honey, it's coming. How are we doing this, Sammy? Coming, man. Can, coming. I, can, can I plate this? Plate it. Plate it. I'm plating it. I'm not playing. I'm plating it. OK, great. You want a goddamn award? I heard all the noise in the kitchen. I mean, it's a zoo back there. If they're screwing around, it's hard to run a smooth ship. I do apologize for the delay. OK, we got a seafood platter. There you go, dear. Please enjoy your food. Hey, yeah, quality up here. Where's the quality? Right, right here. here. Yes. Quality's there. Thank you. Unfortunately, Brian's goofing off is causing Sam to lose his focus. You want quality? I got you quality, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and the customers are feeling the effects. It's I apologize. Can you please reorder this for me? What's the matter with this? The inside's on the cool side. Come on. OK. Brian, Sam, come here a minute. From behind the line, it sounds like we're fucking around. Food's coming back raw. All I want you to do is cut the fucking around and just concentrate a little bit. Because if you concentrate, shit won't come back raw. We waited an hour for our food. Now I'm sitting here 20 minutes waiting for raw fish. Just quit the fucking around. You'll see a difference in the standard. Come on, guys. I know we can do better. You fuck it here, we can do better. Oh, come on, then, just concentrate. Yes, chef. Screw that fucking shit. It's stone cold and raw. You know whose fault all this is tonight? It's his. The people are done eating, and she hasn't got her dip. I haven't even gotten my food yet. I want to leave. All right. You know who I blame? I blame all this on you. It's not difficult, so stop making fucking pathetic excuses. Here we got Chef Ramsay giving us a hand, and now you're going to turn around and basically spit in his face and say, it's your fault that I suck? That's horrible. I feel sorry for the man. Honey, it's coming. We don't even want it. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. You just got to slow down and stop being a fucking goofball throwing food out there. Good. Great. Thanks. Nothing complicated. Outstanding. Good man. Good man. B6 is ready to walk. We got a table walking. Let's go, guys. Get back in your fucking truck. Right. Coming to me looking for excuses. Excuses? I ain't got no excuses. You just said you blame me. You did. On the shit I ate when I first arrived. That's cool. Thanks, Chef. Huh? What a fucking idiot. We're this together, right? I would never come back here again. Fucking cement mixer. This guy's a pain in the ass. Where's Brian? In this hugely important dinner service. I got three Marcellas coming on a fly. I need them, Sammy. Dishes started to come back. Sam, yeah. I've got pink chicken. Pull it together. Come on. I want to leave. And when Chef Ramsay tried to restore order. Quit the fucking around. You'll see a difference in the standard. Brian couldn't handle the criticism. You know who I blame? I blame all this on you. Get back in your fucking truck. Right. Coming to me looking for excuses. Thanks, Chef. And packed it in. We're supposed to be in this together, right? What a fucking idiot. This guy's a pain in the ass leaving a father and son to rely on each other to save this restaurant. Come on, I'm not giving up. I'm not fucking giving up. All right, Sam. Real Marsala, is it out? Real Marsala is coming right now. OK, I think you're the size. OK, I got a shrimp scampi coming on a fly. Uh, salmon, right after? You got it. You got this, all right? I couldn't have asked for any better. Father and son finishing off. Yes? Yes, chef. I'm so happy to know that me and my father can work side by side without trying to kill each other. I mean, it's a great feeling. That's what I always wanted. Excellent. Hey, what a difference. They look great. Beautiful. Steven's delicious. Yeah. You have to try this. It is so delicious. good. Delicious. I like that a lot. Yeah, you did an excellent job today, Sam. I'm yeah. proud of us. You know what I mean? I think over home, my son did really, really good. He pulled through, so that shows me a lot. He made me realize that family, it's everything. And that's what we have with each other. This place is going to work, Pop. After an incredibly successful relaunch, the only thing left for Gordon to repair is the family. We have come a long way. From the first minute I walked in here, I saw a family that wasn't even talking to each other. They were talking over each other, and nothing was sinking in. I asked all of you individually to write a letter. And before I go, I want you to read the letter. Kathy. To Joe and Sam, I see that our lives and the way we exist and treat each other is not acceptable any longer. We need real change before it's too late. Joe, I don't want to be a widow. Please 
try to trust in Sam. You need to teach and support him. You need to let him make mistakes. You need to pull back. Sam, my beautiful son, it's time to fucking stand up. You know this has always been for you and about you and your new life. Don't be scared. It's time for you to shine and start busting some ass. Love, Ma and Kathy. Well done, my darling. That was tough. Sam, you're not out of the woods. I thought maybe we didn't have time. <laughs> yeah, well. Dear Dad, this letter is coming straight from the heart. I have always looked up to you. Dad, I really, truly only want you to be proud of me. It feels like I am a big disappointment to you because of my past immaturities. I really am sorry if I disappointed you, and even more sorry if I hurt you. I love you, Dad. All I want is to take this restaurant over and let you relax. We is all we have, and without each other, we are nothing. Love your son, Sam. Amazing. And now, the man. The reason why we're all here. Take your time. To Sam. I, Sam, I am writing this few words to let you know that this last couple of days, you made me realize how important you are to me. And I came to realize that you are ready. I want you to take charge. Finally, I am really proud to have a son like you. P.S. I never stop loving you. And I'll be there for you no matter what happens. Love you, Dad. You're an amazing family. You've just forgotten it. This is the closest I felt to my husband and my son in a really long time. My father saying that he loves me and he's proud of me and he wants me to take over. It's everything I always wanted. It's my dream come true. Chef Ramsey brought back the love that we had that we almost lost. And I'll never forget that. You are the American dream. Good night. Good night.